I've been researching hotly searched topics in the camera community, and it turns out the Nikon D5600 is getting a lot of attention lately. And it deserves it, because it's a nice camera. When things get searched for, that usually means people are shopping. So I'm glad you found me before you buy, because I hope to be an important stop before your final decision. The D5600 might not be the right camera for you. Maybe you looked at the price and thought, hey, that's within my budget. Hold on now, I might be able to save you some money. But before I can do that, we need to answer the question of what you're going to use the camera for. Do you just need it for day-to-day -day memory capture? Are you looking to upgrade? Or are you getting your very first camera? To explain why this is even a real question at hand requires a comparison of other models that you might not have considered. Stick around to the end for my recommendation based on what you're looking for. Enter the 3000 series of cameras. For this comparison, we will be looking at the Nikon D3500 versus the 5600. And honestly, it will be faster to tell you how they differ rather than what they have in common. And most of the D5600 advantages may not even be worth the extra money. Let's go. As I said, they have almost every important thing in common, megapixels, ISO range, frames per second, and even their video specs are the same at 1080. So here are the differences. In these entry-level cameras, there are things called exposure modes and scene modes. If you hope to be a photographer someday, none of it matters because I want you to learn how to shoot in manual. These modes really only matter for capturing memories and documenting vacation and then putting the camera in the closet until your next trip. They've got little pictures on them and you can just set it to the one that looks like the right thing. It's that simple. Some of these exposure modes are program, shutter priority, aperture priority, and auto. Both cameras have these, but the Nikon D5600 has way more scene modes for the individual who doesn't want to learn photography. The 3500 has child, close-up, landscape, night portrait, portrait, sports, and special effects. I have no idea what that last one does. The D5600 has portrait, landscape, child, sports, close-up, night portrait, night landscape, party slash indoor, beach slash snow, sunset, dusk slash dawn, pet portrait, candlelight, blossom, autumn colors, and food. Another difference is the D5600 will also shoot images in 14-bit RAW, while the D3500 is limited to 12-bit RAW. Regardless of whether you want to capture memories or learn photography, this shouldn't matter to you. In the future, maybe. I care about these things because I put my images through an absolute gauntlet and I need every little bit of something that I can get. So that little 14 bit versus 12 bit matters to me. But for someone just starting out, you'll never see a difference. Even many experienced pixel peepers probably don't edit their photos to the extent where 12 bit versus 14 bit matters. For almost everyone else, it's probably bullshit marketing. Neither of these cameras in today's day and age are very good at video. Most DSLRs can't even sniff the talent that mirrorless cameras have for video. But just in case, technically the 5600 has an edge because it has a microphone port. For battery life, the D3500 supposedly can take 1,550 shots to the D5600's 970. If you're new to photography, you probably don't know this, but this callout is consistently the most inaccurate on any spec sheet. Every camera will take more than the advertised shots. The only other difference that may matter to you is the back screen. The 5600 is fully articulating, it'll do this and flip around, and it's a touch screen, while the D3500 is a fixed, immovable, non-touch screen. For me personally, I do get some use out of a screen that moves, sometimes. But until recently, I just laid on the ground if I needed a low angle. I consider flippy screens nice conveniences that have a decent likelihood of being the first thing to break off as the hinges are generally totally booty cheeks quality and plastic. All of my cameras over the last four years have had touchscreens, and I always turn off touch features because I constantly bump it, changing a setting accidentally, or autofocusing off somewhere else with my nose or my finger or a knuckle, and accidentally taking a shot of my foot or my crotch. Touchscreens are a total pain in the ass for me personally, so I consider them a non-factor whenever I'm making a decision on a new camera. Are you impressed with the differences? I don't think you will be, and neither am I. So now, let us revisit what kind of buyer you are. If you have absolutely no interest in ever learning photography and you just need a tool to record what you're doing, the 5600 could be a good buy because it has all of those automatic scene features. That will probably leave you happy. But if you actually wanna try out photography and you need your first camera, if you are unsure, if you even have an interest in long-term photography, do not buy this camera. In fact, I don't even recommend the D3500 if you are unsure if you will fall in love with photography. If you are unsure, I'd say get a D3200 for roughly 150 bucks from KEH. Finally, if you fall into the category of someone who is upgrading to a D5600, I highly recommend you consider going mirrorless at this point. 
I know, I know, mirrorless. But if you're upgrading, you already love photography and will probably continue shooting and mirrorless is the future. Nikon's Z lenses are some of the best in the business and will only get better. Upgrading in 2023 or later is more future-proof if you go mirrorless, as DSLR lenses and camera manufacturing is basically dead and repair support is next. Eventually, there will be no parts for DSLRs. In short, I would recommend you check out the Z50 before making your final decision. Or for a really fantastic camera and a super good value, the full-frame Nikon Z5 isn't that far away from a D5600 in price. By the way, I have tons of videos on the Nikon Z5. Just search Z-Wade Photo Nikon Z5. Make sure you ask me any questions that you have in the comments. And once you've made your decision, come on back so I can congratulate you on your purchase. Either way, I think you're getting a great camera if you're going with a Nikon. Stay sharp, YouTube.